The only way to achieve eternal world peace, he will explain, is to put an end to the five causes of war. Secretly, he knows there is only one main cause of wars. The wars caused by his royal ancestors, who planned, provoked, financed, and profited from them. He will sell his peace plan by telling the world that border wars will only end by creating a world without borders. Religious wars will only end by creating one world religion of interfaiths. Economic wars will only end by creating a cashless, debt-free society. Rivalry wars between rulers will only end by creating one world ruler. The tools used for war, from handguns to nuclear bombs, will be eliminated, and one world army will be created, which will guarantee world peace. How will this eternal peace plan be accomplished? through the United Nations, which is the brainchild of the Committee of 300 Ruling Families. The UN is their vehicle for world government and is located on 18 acres of prime Manhattan land donated by the most visible of the ruling families, the Rockefellers. The UN is a closed organization with no public records or open meetings. US taxpayers have already invested $2 trillion in this world authority. Although most of the people working for the UN are genuinely working for peace, the UN is a godless organization controlled by the Committee of 300. These inbred ruling families pretend to have royal blue blood, but their blood is no more blue or royal than Hannibal Lecter's blood. Some speculate that these families of evildoers are demons or aliens or evil shape-shifting reptilians, but there is a more scientific explanation for their madness. For thousands of years, these families have practiced inbreeding between sisters and brothers, uncles and nieces, mothers and sons, to keep the power and wealth all in the family. This practice of inbreeding over thousands of years has produced a clever but pathological breed of conscienceless, sociopathic families who will stop at nothing to own every ounce of gold, every drop of water, and every blade of grass on planet Earth. The United Nations, which they founded and control, has clearly stated its goals of establishing a new world order, a UN standing army, and a global taxation system. The Queen's husband, Prince Philip, and Evelyn Rothschild have already established an interfaith declaration for the creation of one world religion. What would life be like in this world empire with one world religion, one world army, one world economy, one world court, one world media, one world government, and one world dictator? What the public doesn't know is that Karl Marx's Communist Manifesto and the Russian Constitution have been built into the UN Charter and that the New World Order will be a communist world order. Peace on Earth will be a forced peace in which citizens will have no rights. No right to bear children without approval, no right to travel without authorization, no right to own private property, no right to privacy, no right to bear arms, no right to protest, no right to receive an inheritance, no right to choose an education or a job or even a place of residence, and worst of all, no right to live. The right to live will be based on an individual's rating of usefulness to the royal elite. In this planned world without borders or nations, citizens will be disarmed of all weapons, including handguns, and will have no means to protest, fight, resist, or challenge this one world authority who will control them spiritually, economically, and militarily. Every human being will be electronically tattooed and will become helplessly dependent on this one world authority for all of their most basic needs. The masses will eventually be taught to bow down and worship this one world dictator who will rule the entire world from his eternal throne in Israel. The big question is, who is this charismatic leader that the entire world would be willing to accept as their ruler? According to plan, this future world ruler will prove himself to be a descendant of Jesus Christ and Mary Magdalene, and will therefore be accepted by the Christian world. Some will even view him as the Savior and Messiah. 
As a professed descendant of Christ and a proponent of world religion, he will also be accepted by Buddhists, Hindus, and the Eastern world where Jesus Christ reportedly lived, studied, and preached Eastern philosophy. Since he is a descendant of the Hebrew tribes of Israel, he will also be accepted by Hebrews and Jews worldwide. By marrying a Muslim woman, he will win the acceptance of the Muslim world. He will also be accepted by worldwide Freemasonry and secret societies, which he is a member of. As the son of Princess Diana, he is already loved and worshipped. When his mother died in the arms of a Muslim man in a Paris car crash, the world embraced him. On May 31, 2004, the Rothschild Controlled Associated Press published a photograph worldwide taken by Alastair Grant. The photo shows Prince William posing with a lamb like Jesus Christ, who the Bible calls the Lamb of God. What is the significance of this photograph? To the unaware observer, the photograph is perfectly innocent, but to insiders familiar with the protocols of Zion, Freemasonry, and the Book of Revelations, William is identified in the photo as the Antichrist. The Antichrist has been described in art and literature as handsome and charming and a master of lies and deception. Freemasons call him the Baphomet or Goat of Mendes. He has also been described as the embodiment of evil and the enemy of God and has been called Satan, Lucifer, Pan, the Beast, and Amun. He is commonly illustrated with cloven hind hooves. Why is Prince William holding up a cloven hind hoof in the photograph? The question of whether God or Satan even exist has been fiercely debated since the beginning of debates. Some people believe that God and Satan are inventions of the ruling class to control the masses. Most people acknowledge the existence of positive creative energy characterized by joy, love and vitality, and the existence of negative destructive energy characterized by greed, hatred and death. The triumph of evil in the world today is based on the ability of evil to disguise itself as its opposite and fool the masses. According to Masonic calculations, Prince William is predicted to be crowned world dictator in the year 2015 at the age of 33. Without organized intervention, life and peace on earth will take on a whole new meaning. How many people would be willing to play a game of Monopoly with real money if the banker was making up the rules, rigging the dice, stealing the money, cheating the players, and grabbing up all the properties? The answer is almost everybody. The truth is that only 1% of the world's population of over 6 billion people is controlling the other 99%. That 1% owns the world's banks and most of the world's wealth, land, and resources. So why is everybody passively cooperating with this madness? Because the wealthy 1% who write the rules have taught the other 99% to obey them and to feel powerless to change things. When people feel powerless, they cling to passive attitudes like ignorance is bliss, things aren't that bad, or let God take care of everything. Before choosing a passive attitude, remember that the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good people to do nothing.